We want to preserve our river. We want to preserve our forest. We want to preserve our land. Forced displacement is actually a cultural genocide. It's clear that water resources are highly valuable. Big dams are not the answer. So what's the alternative? This is really about where we want to go as a human community. Penduduk asli di Malaysia telah berulang kali dipaksa berpindah dari tanah milik mereka sepanjang lebih 50 tahun ini. Sebelum dipaksa berpindah dan ditempatkan semula, penduduk asli di Sarawak banyak bergantung pada hutan-hutan dan air sungai untuk membina tempat perlindungan dan mendapatkan bahan makanan, ubat-ubatan dan air minum. 40 to 80 million people, more than half are indigenous people. So dams really are an instrument of destroying indigenous cultures. And if, if you pass through the lake here, tell you the spots where the villages have been submerged. So one of them is here, the first longhouse. Sebelum dipaksa berpindah dan ditempatkan semula, penduduk asli di Sarawak banyak bergantung pada hutan-hutan dan air sungai untuk membina tempat perlindungan dan mendapatkan bahan makanan, ubat-ubatan dan air minum. When they were in their own original place of living, they were cash poor but they have everything they need. The food, shelter and all the rest of it to support their way of life. Ucapkan dalam uh, rangsangan ini permula seorang yang berpindah ini dasarnya di rumah pancang dulu di tempat lama semua wong-wong itu giam-giam itu sudah hapus Pak. We have all that we need are here. We have the land. This is the most important thing. You have land, you live. No land, you die. Sebelum ditempatkan semula, Syarikat Pembinaan Empangan dan Kerajaan berjanji untuk memberi kawasan perumahan dan perladangan yang lebih baik, membina sekolah untuk anak-anak dan memberi wang sebagai pampasan. Selepas penduduk asli berpindah, mereka sedar bahawa suasana kehidupan baru mereka jauh berbeza daripada apa yang telah dijanjikan kepada mereka. They're taken out of their village, they're thrown into some shoddily built housing, often allows the access to water, no access to electricity, even though they may have lost their land to provide electricity for other people. And there's just a litany of, of broken promises and broken lives. The argument is often made, oh, these indigenous people, you know, they're living in the past and we're doing them a favor by bringing them forward into the modern world. But it should be their decision what sort of life that they lead. And it's not up to some government bureaucrat or corporate dam builder to say, okay, we're going to take him from a way of living that we don't like and put him into a way of living that we think he should live in. It's definitely not healthy to drink or swim at the stream anymore. At the time, there are some kind of disease, you know, from the, the water, what we call, over here we call it kencing tikus, and, and its scientific name is something like medolysis, something like that. And, and some people die because of that, and some people, you know, get very sick, and they didn't recover and, and have to live with it. Penduduk asli yang dijanjikan kehidupan yang lebih baik, peluang pekerjaan, tanah pertanian dan peluang pendidikan kini hidup dalam keadaan yang miskin dan berpenyakit di kawasan penempatan baru mereka. Nak no anak kami, nak no cucu kami pelaan. Gima do jiti no abandah ilo pengumuman dah, abandah ilo urut dah. Abandah nak tubuh dah, abandah nak kebun dah. Aban mesti anak sekolah. Rigit jinun aban mesti anak ke sekolah. Anak melok 
dua telok bulan menino ya ala pengejam nak menino ya sengalah mana there are so many people in one place crowded no place to go there's no big river like this where they can go fishing so some people they don't know how to use motorcycle they don't know, don't know how to use motor car uh, so they cannot go anywhere even the bicycle they cannot use so so they are they are like you put them in a jail uh, even if they say you compensate them you know uh, uh, but you taken away the source of livelihood uh, I think they might be able to survive five, ten years down the road, but not beyond that. This very simple message, think twice. Uh, we have example, Pakun and Murum Dam, the affected people. These people in Baram, they must uh, think twice before they accept. Kerajaan sebenarnya tidak perlu memaksa penduduk asli Sarawak untuk berpindah. Penjanaan tenaga berskala kecil merupakan alternatif yang lebih sesuai berbanding projek Mega Hydro yang boleh melindungi hak-hak asas penduduk asli di samping menjana tenaga lestari. There are a number of resources like micro hydro and solar um, and even small scale biomass that could actually um, supply energy in a robust way in these communities and at lower cost than diesel. Now solar and wind power are mainstream technologies and I think it's important that societies that are discussing major investments in their energy systems don't look back to you know, 1950s type technologies but rather look forwards and see what's the grid of the future going to look like and it's pretty clear in the US, in Europe particularly and now changes happening elsewhere also that it's going to be it's going to be a mix there's going to be a lot more small localized generation sources there's going to be a lot more diversity of sources so solar and wind and geothermal and biomass and micro hydro where you've got the right resource for that well i think we need to go back to to the basic that uh, this is uh, when when our forefathers uh, established this country it was based on the principles of democracy and over the years, uh, especially after 1969, uh, we have sidetracked from, from, from that uh, objectives and also from, from uh, the intentions of our forefathers. So it's, it's time for us to go back to our basic principles and, and in a democracy uh, basically is the rule of the people and, and people have uh, the say in charting the future of this country. Sejak Oktober 2013, penduduk tempatan telah menghalang pembinaan empangan baram melalui tindakan yang langsung dan teratur seperti sekatan, bantahan terbuka dan membina kesedaran umum di Sarawak. Inilah masa kita semua untuk melakukan perubahan. Sertailah masyarakat baram dan sama-sama kita boleh menentukan masa hadapan yang lebih terang untuk semua penduduk Sarawak.